You can't stop it when a bubble pops. Just hope you're standing far, far away. Real estate has been rising, but what isn't being looked into is why is this happening? What has caused this to occur? What can keep this sustained? Or is this just a matter of time? You came here for the truth. You've probably seen these stores or something similar in your city. Offering you a $300 loan for only $20. Offering you your payday advance. These stores seem to be creeping up everywhere in Toronto. Meanwhile, we have individuals in the most debt they have ever been. This same scenario goes for many cities around the world. And I'd like to know your thoughts, of course. Put them in the comments. Let's get into this right away. Looking at this Wall Street Journal article, tapping your home equity for cash is big again. Bank insists that the increased borrowing doesn't herald a return to housing bubble days. They promise, and of course, we can trust them. Further in the article, rising home prices are getting borrowers comfortable again with the idea of tapping into their homes for cash. Home equity lines of credit and cash out mortgage refinances Two products that let customers spend the windfall of home ownership are back in vogue with consumers. Everybody's feeling confident because the market is rising, the housing prices are rising, interest rates have remained quite low historically, and everything is doing just fine. Of course, it's not exactly the case. I'll show you a couple more things here. The home equity loan, auto loans, we're talking about lines of credit and essentially the ability to take the value of your home, pull it out so that you can buy other things with it. This is a very, very dangerous policy that is allowed simply because the belief is that real estate prices will always rise over the long term. That's fine. However, many people will be underwater and they will not be able to pay back. They don't realize that or it's simply allowing as many people as possible to get in. And should there be an issue, don't worry, the central bank will be there to save the day. Look at this. Borrowing builds home equity line of credit originations quarterly Although we are not back into the days of the financial crisis, we have hit highs we haven't seen since 2008. So think about this when we had such a serious issue back in 2008 already by then. The problems were very clear. Think about how disastrous that was, the subprime crisis. Too much debt, not enough real economy and simply a bubble at its peak. It was the irrational exuberance that Alan Greenspan talked about. And here we are today facing the same crisis. Now, what will be done about it? Absolutely nothing. In fact, they will help blow this up bigger and bigger and bigger. They're going to do everything they can to keep this going. But when it happens, it's going to be a lot worse. This is just one example. Home equity loans are so dangerous, they should never be allowed. If this is your asset, you have to pay it back. That's just a matter of fact, because you put the burden on everybody else. When they do bailouts, it's coming out of everybody's pocket. That's the way the system works. People don't think of it like that, but of course that's the way it is. I think that this is simply another scheme to keep this all going. It just so happens that we are in the financial crisis part two. That's my term. I'm sticking to it. It's very clear. And in some cases, actually, it's, it's much worse. The Case-Shiller National Home Price Index, something that I show regularly here on this channel. In this regard, we are worse off, worse off than before. You also have to factor in that the prices have been rising significantly faster than inflation, the fake inflation numbers. 
There's no way to stop this if they continue their policies of low interest rates, of easy monetary policies. Look, the central bank in the U.S. may not be printing, but there's hundreds of billions being printed into the system. Every single month, they make their way around. That's just the way it is. Now, this is one more indicator, right? But let's look at this for a second. This happens to be about Canada, but you can pretty much attribute this to most countries. Think about this. This is out of, by the way, the Fraser Institute, okay? I always show you the actual polls. I show you the actual documentation, the white papers. I show you the reports. I don't just give you the mainstream media news. I show you the reports. Two trillion dollars in household debt is now approximately 170 percent of household disposable income think about that for just a moment in 1990 when there was a housing crisis a banking crisis the household debt to in disposable income 90 percent imagine that prices were very high at that time and yet, that was practically half of what it is today. The amount of debt they have allowed to accumulate is absurd, it's dangerous, and it shows you that this system is frail, it's fragile. Canadians are regularly inundated with news stories about policy concerns over household debt. These concerns, however, what a joke this is, look at this can be seen to be overblown once we properly account for the other side of the balance sheet. Can you believe this? A complete propaganda piece. When you tell me that 170% of your household disposable income is it's insane. But here we are. So what will happen? Well, ultimately, the consumers are in over their heads. They're taking out the home equity loans, taking all that value, all of that appreciation, which, you know, you're using the appreciation as a, a way to suggest that, you know, everything is just fine. Yet the appreciation is what you're taking from. You're taking that equity. You're going to buy your iPhones and your, your computers and your cars and whatever, and you're left with an empty asset, essentially. There's nothing there. At least if somebody's going to pay down on their mortgage debt, at the very least, they have it like a bank account. It's there. Maybe they've been living in that house for 40 years. House is paid off. They don't really have any savings in the bank, but at least they have their home. But if you take all that money out of the home, you're in big trouble at some point. It might take five years. It might take 10 years. doesn't matter. At some point, you're going to be in trouble. Right now, we have historically low interest rates. Interest rates just have to rise just a little bit. And when it comes time to renew your mortgage, to refinance, you're going to be in big trouble. Don't fall into this trap. I'm talking to people all the time about this trap that they're in. Very big mistake. So that's all I wanted to get to for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. Please support me by subscribing to the YouTube channel. There are now, as of this video, over 63,000 subscribers. I want to say hello to each and every one of you. Hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for clicking that button to subscribe here. I do videos you know, once, even twice a day sometimes. So check them out. They're on various topics, financial, real estate. I get into even health topics occasionally. So there's lots to uh, be covered here on the channel. Stay tuned for more. If you want to leave me a comment down below, I'd appreciate that as well. Take care. Let me just throw my plug in at the end here. If you found the video informative, I know you'll find my books, The Money GPS, and my new release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. The links are in the description below where you can actually flip through the books at Amazon. Take care.